This is a very quiet street in the very heart of London, literally just round the corner from Broadcasting House. And if you can see behind me, there's a green plaque, uh, a very special green plaque, in fact. I've often said before here on the show, it's the programs that you watched when you were very young that leave an indelible mark on your mind, you know? I mean, you can tell the culture I've got, can't you? Hong Kong Fooey, The Jetsons, the Osmond cartoon, who remembers that? Oh yes, <laughs> the Harlem Globetroppers. All of those um, cartoons I remember so well. Of course, way back the BBC started out a children's department with things like Andy Pandy, Bill and Ben the Flowerpot Men, who remembers that? And of course, things like Rupert Bear, which would all be seen as really now just not in tune with the times. And when you think about it, it's quite sad in many respects. But this building behind me really was the very start of it all for the BBC. You see, when the BBC started in the 1930s, Lord Reith, who was the very first boss, if you like, of the BBC, basically said it's not necessarily there to be fluffy, it's there to educate, entertain and, of course, inform. He was very severe, was Lord Reith, and it's only when he went on a holiday and realised that people were actually looking for other things, basically meeting the public, that he decided to change his mind. So just a stone's throw across from the BBC Broadcasting House is this, the school radio offices. And this is where everybody came to be trained and all that sort of stuff. And you know, there were the presenters that literally went on air. And voices for a generation. It's hard to imagine now just how big radio was, but you know, an instant voice takes you right back, doesn't it? And there were so many of them during that particular time. So this gorgeous building here was the home of the BBC School Radio, starting in 1952 and going right through until 1993. It was, as I say, the pioneer of education for children throughout radio broadcasting. Now, if you're very lucky, sometimes schools will be allowed to attend certain broadcasts to see their very favourite shows being put together. And I'm sure this sparked an interest in many people of that period wanting, desiring and hoping for a career in the world of broadcasting. As the digital age took hold in the early 90s, sadly it was disbanded and moved away from here and incorporated into an office in Wood Lane. That now is also gone, simply because BBC Television Centre, which was opened in 1960, is now still a collection of studios, but mainly flats, apartments. It's all been sold off. With these plaques with you is this. It truly is a case of writing on the wall, isn't it? You know, you see these things and then think, who lived there? What happened? And how was it put together? I often think when you look at the doorways of these places, you come away and think, Goodness, all of those people that it was a pivotal point in their lives, you know, a big career, everything, so many important people. And then you turn up on a day like today and all that remains is literally a mark. And that truly has to be, we have to be grateful of that, that at least they're being remembered. As I say, when you look at these sort of uh, educational stuff on television today, it's all so different, isn't it? It's fed through iPads and iPhones. People download as and when they want, watch as and when they want, all of that sort of stuff. It seems to have taken away the fun of children's television, children's radio. I remember every year watching a programme over here called Blue Peter, and every year they would make the advent calendar through wire coat hangers and tinsel and live flame candles. Imagine doing that today. <laughs> I mean, you just wouldn't be allowed, would you? It's incredible when you think. Often it went up in flames. That was the fun of it, though, wasn't it? So when you hark back to your childhood, whether you bought a Stanley Matthews annual for football, or indeed, as I mentioned the other day, something like Star Trek, perhaps Space 1999, any of those things, you look back and it instantly creates a memory of how old you were, what you were doing, and the ambitions that lay ahead. And many ambitions drive inspiration and hopefully different careers all came out of this particular building that literally started the children's school radio for the BBC. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.